Hello, everyone. Um, I am Tara McGowan, and I would like to welcome you to our third webinar in our World Kamishibai Forum series. Um, I have, as I have in the past, prepared a little introduction for all our panelists. Uh, we're very excited to have um, three panelists from Mexico and um, a moderator who I would like to introduce to you. Um, so I'm going to share screen. Um, could you enable sh part, um, screen sharing, Walter? It says host Coming disabled. Up. Here we go. All right. It's still disabled. Oh, here we go. Great. All right. Um, Walter, I think you're sharing screen. <laughs> you need to enable it for me. Okay. No. Um, it's still disabled. Um, maybe while Walter is figuring that out. Um, I want to let everybody know that um, I hope you've had a chance to see the videos uh, that we have already posted. Um, and we will be having some questions that have been pr prepared by our moderator for today. Um, but if you, uh, we, we welcome your questions and um, as you think of them, please type them into the Q&A um, so that we can try to get to all of them in the time that we have. Um, and here I can now share my screen. So um, here we go. So like last time, I would like to share with everybody uh, where our guests are from um, on this map. Uh, so we have moved from Japan to Mexico this time. And we are delighted to uh, introduce you uh, in person to Maria Teresa Farfan Garcia and her daughter, Eteri Trevino Farfan. Uh, they are from Monterrey in Nuevo Leon. And uh, Maria Fe Ibarra Ramirez from Durango. And we are very lucky to have Dr. Jesse Gaynor from San Marcos, Texas. Um, so I'd like to tell you a little bit about each of our guests um, and how I got to meet them and how we all ended up here on the World Kamisibai Forum. Um, Maria Teresa Farfan Garcia has been um, an organizer for the International um, Kamisibai and Oral Storytelling Festival uh, in Monterrey for the past eight years. Um, and uh, she is also a wonderful storyteller and educator. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet her in 2017 at the fifth International Kamishibai and Storytellers Festival, Al Al. And here you can see it's a big group of storytellers, actually 20 or more, and it's a very um, impressive achievement each year that she pulls together a whole week of storytelling, uh, sending out five storytellers, I think, in groups, um, in many groups around the city to libraries and schools. And then in the evening, there's always um, events as well. So it's a very busy week uh, with a lot of exciting performers. And all of this is made possible uh, by also her daughter, Ethiri, who you will meet, and um, her husband, Jorge, who drove us to all of these venues. Um, and it's a very busy week for all. Um, in fact, this year, uh, her festival is moved online, as so many of us have. Um, and she, you can find out information about it on her Facebook um, at FICNOB. Here is the information. Uh, and I believe that they do an event uh, once a month a short event um, to be the online festival this year. Uh, and at Eteri, her daughter, uh, as you may have seen in the video, uh, works as an interpreter for these events. She's also um, trilingual and is a wonderful storyteller and also teacher. She has her own uh, Japanese language school online. 
Uh, and I just want to agree with Eteri's tip in her video that it was a real benefit for me to have Eteri as my interpreter because she's also a storyteller. So she really brought the stories to life uh, in Spanish for me when I was in Mexico. Uh, at the Alal Festival, I also had the opportunity to meet Maria Fe, uh, and she um, is the uh, literacy supervisor in the state of Durango. And uh, she invited me the following year to Durango to the sixth International Kamishibai and Storytelling Festival, Alhi. And as you see, uh, it's many of the same faces. Um, they meet every year when always new people as well. Um, but that was a very exciting event in Durango. And the following year, uh, she invited me uh, to Nunutsi, the International Kamishibai Festival in Durango in 2019. And you may notice several uh, familiar faces in this picture. Uh, Donna Tamaki, who's one of the organizers of the World Kamishibai um, Forum. Uh, Bunchan, who is in an earlier uh, video. Uh, and also uh, they invited uh, Yumi um, Michi, Michiyama, who is from the uh, Ikada group, the International Kamishibai Association of Japan, um, which many of you may also know about. Um, during that week event, um, Maria Fe also launched her book, Kamishibai Educativo, about her research um, and the work that her teachers have been doing on kamishibai in the classroom. So she has a lot of experience with kamishibai in the schools, and both Tere and I uh, had the opportunity to speak on that occasion. I also um, have the great pleasure to uh, introduce you to Jesse Gaynor, who is Associate Professor of Literacy at um, Texas State University. Uh, Jesse does a lot of really interesting creative work um, with literacy in the schools and, and also outside the schools with children and adults. Uh, he has um, started his own press, the El Nopal Cartonero, uh, making cardboard books, and here are some examples. Um, and he actually learned about Kamishibai um, from reading Alan Say's book, The Kamishibai Man, and also from a colleague uh, who works in the Texas schools in St. Mar um, San Marcos, uh, Diana Garcia. And it just shows how small a world it is because as it turns out, I had interviewed Diana Garcia back, I think in 2012, for the Kamishibai for Kids um, Spotlight in a series of interviews that I've done with people around the world using Kamishibai in the schools. Um, so you can read about her work at that time in the fourth grade um, with using Kamishibai for bilingual teaching. Um, so I will stop my share there and um, I want to welcome all of you. And Jesse has um, graciously agreed to be our moderators because he can speak Spanish and English, obviously, and also Eteri will help us with the interpreting. So I'm going to turn it over to him to ask some prepared questions, but we also, again, welcome your questions as we go along and we'll try to answer as many as possible. Well, thank you, Tara. And um, it's really an honor to be here. And I I'm super excited to um, get to be part of this conversation. And I really love to hear about um, Kamishibai worldwide, but and in this specific um, case um, in Mexico. So the first question I'm going to ask to um, to Tere, but I want to also say that after Tere answers, if um, Maria Fe and Eteri, if you would like to add to that your own um, perspective for, or answer for this question, then please, please uh, feel free to do that. Um, so the first question is, um, what is it about Kamishibai that makes it so popular in Mexico? Esta es una pregunta para Tere. Y después de que responda Tere, si Fe también quiere responder algo adicional, por favor, hágalo. ¿Qué es lo que hace el Kamishibai tan popular en México? Cuando empecé a presentar Kamishibai, a los niños les gusta mucho ver imágenes. Y lo disfrutan mucho. Funciona... 
funciona tanto si lo presentas en una escuela como si vas y lo presentas en calle. En calle los atrae mucho la imagen. So, um, kids love the images that are on the card. And whether it's in school or in the street, the images are what really um, attract the audience and the children especially. Is there any other, um, Maria Fe, would you like to add to that? Claro, eh, pienso que lo hace popular tanto el formato en, la, en el butai y la imagen, la imagen para ellos, lo visual es muy atractivo. Ok, so the, the stage and the images are what makes it so appealing and so attractive. Uh -huh. Okay. Edeli, did you want to add anything to that in terms of what makes Kamishibai so popular in Mexico? I think it attracts attention uh, because it's not usual to see. Well, we go here in Monterrey, we go with our bicycle. So <laughs> we oh. bring our bicycle to the park and it has a stage in the back. So people just follow us, like, what's that? <laughs> you have kind of a little theater on the back of your bicycle. So it's, yeah, it's kind of big, so everybody notice. And when there's one person, like, people follow them like <laughs> up. So a lot of people come together to watch what we are doing. Oh, I bet. That sounds really exciting. Yeah. Um, I would love to see the, the, the stage mountain on the bicycle, like, the traditional way. Um, great. So, uh, um, for, um, for Tere, um, what characteristics, um, what are characteristics that could describe a Mexican methodology for Kamishibai? So, in other words, um, what makes Kamishibai in Mexico uniquely Mexican? Just look at al Kamishibai de México único, que hay algún tipo de, de técnica es, que se esté utilizando en México. No hay alguna técnica especial, pero los butáis que hacen en México eh, son muy, muy coloridos. Les gusta mucho, mucho que tenga mucho color. Y adaptan también historias que son de, de México. Les gusta adaptar historias de México o de libros también. Okay, so the, um, the stages are very colorful. They're painted in bright colors that are very attractive. And also um, the stories that are actually presented are stories from Mexico often and often from books that are um, from Mexico. Okay. Um, so along those lines for Faye, Will you describe some Kamishibai stories that you or your students have written that share stories and are customs? Um, for example, you had mentioned once a story about Pancho Villa. I wondered if you could tell us about that one. Esta es una pregunta para Fe. Es acerca de si nos podrías un poco explicar eh, los, las historias que realizas tú o tus estudiantes que tienen que ver con México. Por ejemplo, él escuchó que tenían una historia de Pancho Villa. ¿Nos podrías explicar un poco como un resumen de qué se tratan ese tipo de historias? Claro. Eh, básicamente, trabajo Camisibay Educativo en Durango, México. Entonces, es así que adaptamos eh, libros o historias de personajes. En el caso, fue un concurso de Kamishibai adaptado en la historia de Pancho Villa. Uh, esto atendiendo al trabajo colectivo que se pedía en tercer grado de secundaria, como eh, hacer una línea del tiempo de la revolución. Y es por eso que se adaptó la historia de Pancho Villa, atendiendo un contenido didáctico del aula. Ok, so the, so, so, um... Maria Fe works in Durango and they adapt books and stories um, 
from from Mexico, from the context of Mexico. And in this case, they they were studying about the Mexican Revolution. And so for educational purposes, the um, the students wrote the the story about the history of Pancho Villa. Does Pancho just to follow up for um, for um, Maria Fe, does T Pancho Villa hold a particular importance in Durango? Or is that, um, if so, what would that, you know, how, what is the importance of Pancho Villa for, specifically for Durango? Uh, okay, esto es a seguimiento de la misma pregunta, Fe. Eh, Pancho Villa representa a alguien importante en Durango, o qué es, por qué es significativo este personaje? Claro. Pancho Villa nace en San Juan del Río Durango. Justamente es uh, esto también para rescatar la identidad de Durango junto con un contenido que te piden en la escuela. Entonces, fue que por eso eh, hicimos piezas referentes a Pancho Villa, porque nació aquí en Durango y lo cruzamos con una línea del tiempo que nos pedía el contenido didáctico del aula. Teníamos que ver la revolución, tocó eh, que el personaje más fuerte en el norte del país es Pancho Villa. So, um, so yes, Pancho Villa was born in San Juan del Río, Durango, and mm -hmm. um, it's part of a, a, an effort to really have students studying their own history and centering the history of important people from their area. And so, um, and so the students were, were the, the curriculum has them studying the revolution and Pancho Villa is one of the important figures of the Mexican revolution, of course, but he's from Durango and originally and was very important and influential in the Northern part, especially of Mexico. Thanks. Um, I'd like to actually ask that same question if um, if uh, Tere and then also Etere want to um, share any examples about um, student stories that your students or that you have written that are, <coughs> excuse me, um, based in Mexican history or culture. Um, we would love to hear a little bit about that. I think they can answer for that question. So, uh, pregunta uh, para Tere. Hay, uh, ¿cómo adaptamos, bueno, cómo adaptan ustedes en Monterrey o para est tus estudiantes a uh, este tipo de historias? ¿Hacen algún tipo de historias similares de personajes históricos o algo que tenga que ver con la cultura mexicana? Más con la cultura mexicana, no he visto en Monterrey que hagan adaptaciones de algún héroe mexicano del norte, bueno, de esta parte del norte. No me ha tocado ver todavía en Monterrey algo así, pero normalmente lo que hacen es que hacen adaptaciones de historias mexicanas o sus propias creaciones. Ok, so, um, so normally the, the, um, the stories that they're making in Monterrey aren't necessarily based in Monterrey, but they are stories from Mexico and adaptions from books that are written in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Etri, do you have any specific examples you would like to share? Uh, well, it's not from Monterrey, but I know no, just... someone from Veracruz that he actually made, a, his, his name is Lorenzo, and uh -huh. he made a story in Kamishibai about Mexican bread, the more about like culture kind of stuff because he teaches the kids how the Mexican bread is called because each kind of bread has a different name in Mexico. <laughs> so it's mm. really fun. Yes. Like the the sweet bread. Yes, yeah, like concha and cuernitos and yeah, you have oh, a lot okay. of different. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that sounds really nice. So um, we do have a question from. Um, somebody in the audience. It's from Mary in France. And um, this question is actually to you, Etteri. You had mentioned in your video that you teach in 
you teach Japanese language and you use kamishibai in your language education. So Mary was wondering if you could share some of your techniques for using kamishibai to teach foreign language. Like, how do you do that? Well, for me, it's really fun. So I, what I usually do is be repetitive. So I choose one word, like two or three words like keywords and keep repeating them so they remember and make it fun. <laughs> so for example, uh, there is a really famous book about that's called in Japanese Okiku Okunare. So they repeat that and it means grow, grow bigger. So they say Okiku Okiku Okunare and the thing that's in the book gets bigger like magic. So they get really happy. So they remember that's happy Japanese word, remember, keep it. Uh -huh. Nice. Yeah, so it's the repetition and the choral response that yeah. helps with the memory, too. And link it with something funny. And link it with uh, funny. Yeah, with experience, so it's easier. Very nice. Thanks. Um, okay, so um, for uh, Maria Teresa, um, are most of your stories of kamishibai handmade? Or are there published stories in Spanish that you that you find from commercial um, publishers? Uh, <clears throat> pregunta para, para Tere. Este, ¿Todas las historias de kamishibai que cuentas son hechas a mano o son de alguna editorial en específico? ¿O hay editoriales en México que estén publicando kamishibai y estés utilizando esas historias? En México no están publicando ninguna historia eh, que sea aquí. Igual se pueden conseguir las que se venden en Estados Unidos o en España, pero aquí no hay producción propia. La producción que se hace aquí solo es para el mismo artista o el maestro que lo está usando. El kamishibai que yo uso, la mayoría de los cuentos son japoneses. Me gustan mucho los cuentos japoneses. Eteni me ayuda a hacer las traducciones. Y ahorita que los estoy contando en línea, eh, cuento cuentos hechos a mano. Um, okay. So, um, okay, so there are no commercial publishers in Mexico who are producing kamishibai stories um, in Spanish. But uh, it is possible to find kamishibai stories that are published in the United States and in Spain um, that you can get. But also um, teachers often will make their own. And um, something that I thought was really neat is that um, with the internet, there. Um, that is able to find stories and she really likes Japanese stories and is able to find them online and and then make translations for them. So, thanks. Um, okay, so for, um, for Maria Fe, um, we know you've, you've done research on literacy development using Kamishibai and you even wrote a book about that can you tell us a little bit about how um, Kamishibai can support children's literacy development? This is a question for Fe. Can you explain how Kamishibai can help the development of literacy in the children? Yes, of course. Literacy is a term that is international that talks about comprehension lectora y producción de textos. El formato perfecto para el fortalecimiento de esto es Kamishibai, a razón de eh, la imagen del texto discontinuo y del texto continuo que tenemos visualmente en lectura. Entonces, literacidad eh, ayuda mucho para el desarrollo eh, lectoescritura y lecto, eh, en lectura. Es por eso que apostamos para que se fortalezca más el hábito y la comprensión lectora. Okay. Um, okay, so thank you. Um, literacy is an international term and Kamishibai is a is very uh, powerful way to help with reading comprehension and with 
um, and with readership and text writing even. So it's the integration of the visual imagery with, which is like nonlinear, um, with linear type text and storytelling. So some of the benefits include building the habit of reading and becoming, developing as readers um, and motivation, but also uh, reading comprehension is developed uh, through the Kamishibai storytelling and um, both receptive listening to Kamishibai and also producing and creating Kamishibai. I have a clarification over the last answer. Yes. So, uh, okay, about the Japanese stories, they are actually not from online. Oh. They are, so we, my mother and I sometimes go to Japan before COVID-19 and bring the Kamishibai stories. And I helped her translate them. So they ha she has them in Spanish because they don't have translations usually in Spanish. And now because of COVID-19, she's doing online translations, but not using those kinds of kamishibai. She needed to make her own kamishibai stories. So she had already before, but she needed to make more, to have more variety of self-made kamishibai for online presentation in, during this year. Oh, I see. So creating online content for Kamishibai. Yes. yes, because for like that kind of publish, publish Kamishibai, you, you need to have the permission from the authors sure. to actually to perform online. So yes. I see. Thank you for that clarification. That was helpful. Um, okay. So um, another one for um, Maria Teresa. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your work with children in different communities, um, especially in underserved or under-resourced communities? Esta es una pregunta para Tere. ¿Nos podrías platicar un poco más acerca de las actividades que realizas con Kamishibai en áreas de escasos recursos? El año pasado y el antepasado estuve trabajando con una asociación civil Esa asociación iba a muchas escuelas de escasos recursos y tenía el gusto de contarles cuentos de Kamishibai a muchos niños. Tenía funciones, cuatro o tres funciones al día, con públicos de 100, 200 o 300 niños al día. Um, so, for the last couple of years, she has worked in under-resourced schools and low-income schools. Um, presenting Kamishibai stories uh, to sometimes to 100, 200, or 300 children. Um, are you presenting the stories and are you um, doing workshops for the students to also make their own stories? Or it's more of a presentation? Esas presentaciones uh, se realiza más como solo presentaciones de Kamishibai o a veces también incluyen talleres de Kamishibai para que los niños aprendan a hacer sus propias historias. Con, el, con ellos solo les contaba cuentos, pero fue muy bonito porque también les di talleres a papás y preescolar para que hicieran sus cuentos de Kamishibai y los papás iban a seguir presentándoles cuentos frecuentemente. Oh, so with, the, with the children, she was in that particular case was presenting stories, but um, she's also done workshops with the parents where the parents were making stories and then we'll continue to tell the stories that they had made. Okay, um, okay. And, and also, um, Tere, you had mentioned before that you, uh, in the video, that you have done some work um, or that it's important to um, to value the indigenous languages of Mexico. And I wanted to ask you if you have experience performing Kamishibai um, to indigenous speakers, and um, if you would share an example of how that looks, how did that go? This is a question for Tere. Yes, he heard that you worked with indigenous 
¿Y quieres saber si has contado cuentos para algún público indígena y cómo se desarrolló, eh, la, cómo se desarrollaron las historias y el evento en esos casos? Me ha tocado contar cuentos en, en escuelas públicas de Monterrey que los niños hablan lengua indígena también. En esos casos les cuento un cuento que es de Oaxaca y el autor original de ese cuento, bueno, el, el, el papá y la autora lo cuentan en lengua indígena, ese libro, me gusta mucho. En Chiapas tuve, tuve un taller con niños indígenas, pero se los di en español no estaba el maestro de lengua y los niños hicieron el cuento en español. Me habría gustado más que lo hicieran en su propia lengua. So, so um, doing um, presentations in Monterrey in public schools, there's indigenous language speakers and um, she's shared stories um, from Oaxaca where parents could translate um, in the indigenous language. And then also in Chiapas, um, she has presented where kids themselves would help with the translation. The kids who are bilingual will help with translation. Oh, uh, the kids, uh, a little bit of fixing. So sure. the, uh, the first part uh, in Monterrey, there she has done workshop with indigenous people, public and in those cases, she told a story from Oaxaca that was made with the authors also brought the book in that indigenous, in a specific indigenous language. I don't remember which one, but they can read it in that book. So they don't have a translation, a translator oh. actually, but they have in the book, they have the translation. I see. And in Chiapas, when she went to do the workshop with indigenous people, the person that spoke their language, their teacher that can call spoke their language wasn't there during that time. So it was a little bit sad because they need, they at the end wrote it in Spanish, no either in their mother tongue. So it was a little bit difficult, but she will have love to hear their stories in their own indigenous language. Yes. I see. Okay, thanks for that clarification. Um, and and um, Maria Fe, um, in your video presentation, you mentioned that your best advice and suggestion is that we would continue to build Kamishibai for peace. Um, will you share an example from you or from your students that demonstrates this idea of Kamishibai for peace? Una pregunta para Fe. Eh, le escuché que estaba desarrollando el Kamishibai con el enfoque en la paz. ¿Nos podrías dar algún ejemplo de cómo tus estudiantes o tú misma han hecho este trabajo para desarrollar el concepto de la paz a través del Kamishibai? Sí, claro. Eh, cuando hago mis presentaciones educativas en las uh, diferentes escuelas o en los espacios eh, que, se, que se necesita, Promuevo mucho la paz a razón de la pieza nunca más. Eh, y entonces les explico yo a ellos que es importante promover la paz y no la guerra en el mundo. Enfocamos este contenido con la revolución, que es lo que hablábamos ahorita, y hacemos lo posible porque no haya guerras y promovemos que no haya dentro del contexto escolar problemas también y promovemos a través de eso también la convivencia escolar. Y así entonces los niños eh, ven esas dos partes, tanto la paz como la guerra, y eso es lo que básicamente promovemos a través de Kamishibai. Y ellos al crear sus historias también hablan de, de convivencia escolar en este caso. Um, um, so, so, um, the stories that she's referring to, um, relate to promoting peace and it it connects back to the movement of never again which has a goal of ending war uh, worldwide and um and so connecting back with the the mexican revolution which was a long uh, war in in um that's part of mexican history but also connecting to other wars that are around the world with the hope of communicating and teaching about um 
uh, uh, putting an end to war, but also with a with another um, sort of an, just another um, aspect of of thinking about peace in terms of the um, relationships in the school setting and in society, where to end violence in schools um, and to really focus on living together and and working well together and cooperating rather than having violent con confrontation in in their own contexts of the schools and so when kids make their stories um they're also having themes and and focuses in the stories that relate to how to nurture peaceful relationships and um, cooperation and working together um, Jesse, if I could just interject, um, this is really interesting for me because I have worked in Japan for a long time and you see a lot of correspondence between how Kamishiba is being used in Mexico and, and the interaction between Mexico and Japan. So um, Numka Masa's story, uh, Never Again, is a Kamishiba story um, that Eiko Matsui made um, and it's about the atomic bombing in Japan, but also how we should never have that happen again. And in post-war Japan, Kamishibai has been used a lot um, in the peace movement. Uh, and I think they've been working very hard to spread that to the rest of the world. Um, actually, December 7th has been designated by the International Kamishibai Association of Japan as World <laughs> Kamishibai Day, even though it's the day of the bombing of Pearl Harbor, <laughs> it is a day to remember peace and to um, work uh, using Kamishibai for peace. So I think that has been spread to Mexico. But I also um, was really interested in how in Mexico, their regional legends and histories are being used. Uh, I mean, Kamishibai is being used to um, express those stories for a younger generation. Uh, because that is also happening in Japan. Uh, children in Japan are forgetting or they have never learned about their rituals and their legends in the same way they did when people had oral storytellers. So Kamishibai has become a way in Japan also to teach a younger generation or people from outside about local legends, local histories and um, rituals like festivals and different things. So it's really interesting how um, that is also happening in Mexico. Um, and I, I know that um, Maria Fe shared with us some pictures from her teaching. So this might be a good time to um, share those with the audience. I can share screen and maybe she can explain about them. That's great. Thank you. Van a compartir tus imágenes, Fe, y probablemente si puedes explicar un poco acerca de ellas ahorita que las comparta en la pantalla, Tara. Claro que sí. Bien. Adelante. Yeah, let's um, let us know what you'd like to say about these pictures. Sí, adelante. Fe. Claro. Eh, trabajo camisiba y educativo y lo que hago propiamente es hacer cursos, talleres, conferencias, eh, seminarios para dar a conocer la técnica con los maestros para que los maestros a su vez la trabajen con los alumnos. Okay, so she does workshops, classes, and seminars for teachers to learn about Kamishibai and to learn about how to teach Kamishibai with children. Y a su vez, ellos eh, fortalezcan la, la lectura y la escritura a través del formato Kamishibai. And so the teachers then use Kamishibai to help to support children's literacy development. Desde una adaptación del libro o del texto que llevan en clase. So they'll take a book or a text that they have in class and they'll adapt it to the Kamishibai format. Ellos comienzan leyendo su historia, adaptarla a texto continuo, adaptarla a texto discontinuo y después presentarla y al final hacer un examen de la pieza presentada. Okay, so, so they first read their story and they adapt it for continuous text and discontinuous text or imagery and then they present it 
and then they create an, a test, like an, an exam. Es importante rescatar aquí que cada pieza tiene el, eh, eh, un contenido específico de fortalecer. Un ejemplo, crece, 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 hazte mayor. A, en la parte donde el huevito quebra, hablamos de ovíparos y vivíparos. Okay, so Edri, I may need some help on that one. Um, the, each piece has a specific learning objective. Um, I, I need some clarification about the the the, um, the other yeah. part. You, you want me? Oh. Could so, you ask? Yes, Opipers and baby pers. I don't know how to say in English, but it's so they have a specific topic when they make a story. For example, they talk about the animals that come out from X or come out from their mother. So they center in specific topics with each story for the class. Okay. So Grow, Thank Grow you. Bigger, when she tells the story of Grow, Grow Bigger, she talks about that too. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Así entonces, fortalecemos la literacidad con la lectura, con la escritura, y al final con la interpretación. So that's how literacy is developed through reading, through writing, and through presenting of the stories. Así es. PISA, cada año nos evalúa la comprensión lectora y la producción de textos. Gami Shibai ha fortalecido mucho este término. So the Kami Shibai has, has proven to be very effective in the, um, in the in literacy um, teaching and learning. Shall I move to the next slide? Yes, but uh, as you're doing that, I just wanted to enter. Well, yeah, never mind. Oh, I'll, sorry. I'll I can go back. No, no. I, no. Um, somebody in the chat just mentioned that in Argentina, they have a book called Nunca Mas that's about the military dictatorship from 1976 to 1983. And I thought that was a very interesting connection to the um, story that from the last question about the, the peace movement. But yeah. Sorry. No, that okay. is interesting. Sorry for the interruption. Go ahead, um, um, Maria Fe, sorry. Bien, eh, estos son algunos ejemplos de, ta de talleres que doy con los maestros, donde ellos, en base a su asignatura o su clase, adaptan libros para formato Kamishibai. So here's some examples of teachers who are creating their own kamishibai. They're adapting books, they're adapting texts to uh, create their own kamishibai stories. Dependiendo del contenido didáctico que estén viendo en esa semana. So depending on the um, learning objectives and the topics that are um, being taught in the curriculum for a particular unit of study or during a, during a specific week. Ejemplo, eh, valores, salud, leyendas, mitos. Eh, so, sorry. So, so some examples are health or values or myths. Así es. Así es como trabajo eh, Camisibay Educativo para fortalecer eh, el trabajo de los docentes a través del formato Kamishibai. So this is how she helps teachers to learn about using Kamishibai as a um, as a technique for helping students with literacy um, development. Okay, utilizo Kamishibai como una herramienta de mediación lectora. She's using Kamishibai for a um, um, as a technique for, um, I'm not sure what medita um, mediación lectura. Como un puente entre la lectura y el texto, lectura imagen. 
ah, to connect and bridge between the the reader and the text, or the reader and the um, images. So it's a very constructivist type of um, learning tool. Ajá. Uh -huh. La siguiente. Aquí es un chico de Durango. Eh, él está ilustrando Kamishibai para una leyenda de Durango. Yes. So here is a young man who is illustrating the Kamishibai cards, which I think everybody will recognize is a story, a traditional story from Durango. That was the one that um, that Maria Fe had had um, shared in the video that was about the scorpion in the cell 27. Con este proyecto queremos fortalecer la identidad de Durango hacia otros países. So one of the purposes for this particular project was to um, to share and establish the the identity of Durango, Mexico for um, for international readers and people from the outside. Y así fortalecer las habilidades de diseño, de dibujo, de ilustración y de imaginación de nuestros participantes en talleres. Yes, and this is a way to develop the design, the skills of design, of drawing, of illustration and storytelling for the participants of the workshops. Así es. That's how it is. Thank you. Thank really, you. really um, beautiful. So um, I would like to, I, th I think we're coming to the end of our time, but I thought I would like to ask for each of you to just share what is your favorite story that you share with kids? Do you have a favorite story? And if so, what, what is your favorite one that you like to share and why do you like that one so much? Esta es una pregunta para todas. ¿Cuál es su yes, historia preferida puede. en Kamishibai? ¿Y por qué es su historia preferida? Porque participan los niños y les encantan los ninjas. Okay. So the story that she told, and, you're gonna, and I'm going to have to ask you to repeat the title, um, is her favorite Mat because... Matmar Matna Tanta Katan. <laughs> I can answer that one. Um, that is a story by um, Araki Fumiko um, Bunchan, who did an earlier that. video. So yeah. hopefully everyone can see that story. Absolutely. I saw that one and I love that one too. And I can imagine why it would be your favorite. I just can't pronounce the... I did when I was watching the video, I, I actually did. And, and just, just the way that you had mentioned, I was um, I was repeating back but it was scaffolded better for me because it had the words across the screen. But because of the participatory nature of the story is why um, Tere likes that one so much. Um, okay, how about you, uh, Maria Fe? Do you have a favorite? Yo te puedo decir que tengo varias. Okay. Me encanta mucho los tres encantos mágicos. Eh, crece, crece, crece. Me gusta mucho la historia de Tanabata. O sea... Me encantan todas las historias. No tengo una favorita en especial. Okay, so one of the, she has many different ones and she um, gave a few names, including the three magic encounters. So what is it about the three magic encounters that's so much fun? El de los tres encantamientos en particular, ¿qué es lo que más te gusta? La historia de cómo la bruja eh, quiere comerse al niño y al final terminan comiéndosela a ella. <laughs> okay, she likes that story because it's about the that there's the witch that's trying to eat the children, but then at the end it flips and the kids actually eat her. I can um, just interject. I think that's the Japanese story of the three magic charms, right? So in that story, the 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 witch chases the little boy, and in the end, he's saved by a priest who eats the witch. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> it's yeah, a very I, I favorite a story. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, 
And Eteri, do you what's your favorite or what's one of your favorites? Well, I have, I think, two favorite ones. So one is called Bake Bake Don. It's about three foxes and they transform. So they bucket it. They transform in different fruits and it's really funny. Mm -hmm. And I also like Okigen no Warui Koksan. So it's the, I think, cook that is uh, angry. In a bad mood or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the um, cook, not the angry cook, but yeah, the angry cook. But it's super funny because when I tell it, I love it to tell. I love to tell it to young kids, like kindergarten and first, like first grade, second grade, third grade, because they follow everything I say. So, for example, if I say, "Where is the cook, son?" They search for under the chair. So you see, like. 150 children look under the chair <laughs> if there is a cook sand or anywhere. So it's really fun. And the bucket, bucket on, it actually says, I think they change, they start dancing. So I like it. That sounds, that sounds really, really exciting. Yeah. Um, and for the audience, I should probably say that the Three Magic Charms is by Futamata Egoro or Egoro Futamata. Oh, and that's available on Kamichi Bai for Kids catalog. And the other stories, um, Grow, Grow, Grow Bigger, um, are by uh, Noriko Matsui. And they're available through Doshinsha. And we have some links to those resources. <laughs> that's great. Okay, so, well, we are out of time. Um, I was thinking uh, at the very end to just remind people of World Kamishibai Day on Monday. Um, and it is an opportunity for all of us to tell stories for peace. Uh, we had an interesting mention uh, from Argentina about um, a book also called Nunca Mas. And um, in each country, I know we, we are grappling with <laughs> issues of peace now. So I just hope that everyone stays healthy and um, that we can have a wonderful Kamishibai, World Kamishibai Day on Monday. And we will have our next webinar next month. So in the meantime, I wish everybody very happy holidays and we look forward to seeing you um, in January. Thank you so much for coming. Okay, I think um, everybody, I think we answered everything in the chat and um, we got some really interesting responses. And thank you so much, Jesse. Sure. <laughs> Um, yeah, I hope that went okay. Thank you, Edity and and Tere and, and Maria Faye. That was really interesting and exciting to hear about your work. I really enjoyed it, especially after watching the videos and seeing you perform the stories. Um, I had no idea how really um, diverse those types of stories can be too, because they can be, well, they can be funny they can be um, really serious and they can encompass like um, so much history and instilling a sense of pride for, for kids to learn about their heritage and their background, or they could be about, you know, world peace and, and putting an end to violence either in your own context and or in world context. Um, so it's just, it's, there, it's a whole curriculum uh, and then the visual, everything that I've learned has been great. So I really appreciate it. It's been a huge honor. Um, and then to see it in action, like with the, how the cards get pulled, there's just so much depth to, to it. I see, you know, uh, Donna, let me borrow this book. It might look familiar. <laughs> um, so I get to see how much I, I'm a reading teacher. So I see the um, so much potential there. And it's really nice to see um, Maria Fe, how you described it. And then to see the pictures was really nice too, because it really reminded me of, I think it was Bun Chan, I'm probably saying her name wrong, who talked about that triangle mm -hmm. of the storyteller, the audience, and then the, the cards, and the, then the story that's there. It just is uh, reminds me of reader response and and Louise Rosenblatt and uh, it just has everything to do with um, reading comprehension, like you said, 
and in a very constructivist and powerful kind of uh, learning experience. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, um, I would like to just say too that sometimes people think that kamishibai is only for Japanese folk tales or like it's a genre, but of course it's a format. So anything you could make a movie out of or do a picture book of, you can also do in no. kamishibai. So there anything. is a lot of variety. Um, could Maria Fe maybe tell us, uh, tell the audience who I think many people are still there, oh. um, <laughs> how to, how to, um, actually purchase her book or if, if they want to. Uh, I couldn't find it on Amazon. I, I think she is not anymore. Oh, no. Because, be yeah, she, she can suddenly froze and disappear. Oh, no. Can, can you That's tell people? Or, uh -huh. um, do you know how they could maybe um, acquire her book if they wanted it? ¿Sabes cómo se podría conseguir el libro de fe? No. Uh, maybe we can ask her afterwards and post it on the on the website. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, yeah. Hopefully, oh, in the future. Oh, oh, sorry. Are you there, Donna? Yes. Yeah. I'm here, Walter. I could you put me back on? I'm <laughs> <My> crying. <laughs> Okay, and you finally got me off, and now like I'm asking you to be put on, but it, that doesn't matter as long as you can hear me. Um, I I was thinking, Tara, one thing we forgot to do, Maria um, Tede mentioned how colorful the stages are mm. in Mexico, and we didn't have any images of them. But there were some images in. Um, the video that she shared when it, she was oh, going through. Yes. Um, remember, because she went and showed all the different, many different um, Kamishi by storytellers from Mexico. And uh -huh. there was a couple who had really elaborately painted and colorful stages. Right. So I, I mean, I know because I was looking for that when I, when I watched. Decirles, <laughs> please. Actually, is back. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> Actually, on the cover of um, Maria Fe's book, that is her actual stage. You can see how colorful Ooh. it is. <laughs> wow. That's, That's the one she, she uses. Marvelous. Yeah. And there's uh, a miniature stage in the back. Did you see that? You could. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's fun as well in the back of her book. <laughs> so. So, yeah, it's really um, so interesting. Somebody just said, show us the book cover with title, please. Uh, <laughs> um, can you see that? So we will try to find out from her how, um, oh, she's back. Yeah. Maria Fe, how can we get your book? <laughs> uh, okay, she, she said that you can get information uh, if you send an inbox to her Facebook. Um, can you share that on the on the chat, maybe? Uh, Fe, puedes compartirnos tu Facebook, uh, tu nombre de Facebook en el chat. At, at yeah. Facebook, donde vienen todos, por favor, para que lo tengan y te puedan mandar un mensaje. Claro, claro. Tienes que ponerle donde dice All Panelists and Attendees. When we get through the pandemic, I hope we can meet next time in Durango. Mm -hmm. Abrir. Si quieres, me lo mandas y yo lo pongo. Ajá, sí, está como María Fe y Barra Ramírez. Completo. Por favor. Sí, normal. Y de ahí podemos dar la información por inbox en costo y traslado al país donde lo quieren. Qué gusto que tiene ya eh, Jesse mi libro. So, so um, María Fe put her name is in the face. Um, I mean, Etheri put María Fe's name in fa in the chat. If you go to her Facebook and then you send her a message, uh, for those of you interested in getting a copy of the book, then she can um, send you the you know, figure out what country you're in and figure out the price to send you the book and you can send your address and um, you can figure it out from there. So, but that would be the way to, to 
to um, get a copy of the book. I was going to say that I hope that in the near future we'll be able to travel again and go to Durango and Monterrey. And I, now I really want to go to the park and see the bicycle with and, and see you present some stories from the bicycle. And then maybe after that, we can go to the um, Rey de Barbacoa. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uncle Kamal is there, really good. You should try it. <laughs> Everybody, this was a wonderful one. This was a great seminar. Very, very interesting from beginning to end. So, congratulations to you all. Thank you, Walter. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. Hope to see you all in person soon. <laughs>